Okay, so now I have to decide which one of the three videos for the philosophical talks do I want to do first. So we have three topics here. The first one is the dimensions of existence with a plot twist. So I already did a video on that a long time ago. I don't even remember if it was like, like two or three years ago. So this, this stuff is not new for me. I've been interested in uh, talking about these things for a very long time. It has been, you know, another of those hobbies in the back burner there for a long time. Um, so essentially I have been like an undercover philosopher. I just, you know, it's not what I do for, for anything other than for fun. So I just left it there, but it is another one of my many hobbies. So the topics, the one on the dimensions of existence, I already did a video on that, but the one I did before was somewhat focused on the mathematical dimensions. And the one I want to do now is like my own look at it from another perspective with other dimensions, which are not length times width times height times time times who know what else comes after that. Uh, there are many things that can come after that and I do mention that in the other video. So in the other video I kept going with the dimensions but I was talking about those thinking about the mathematical ones. So now I'm just gonna say the ones I think. I'm not gonna be doing the mathematical one. So that's topic one. Dimensions of existence. The second video on that which I think is gonna be better than the first one because it's my own look at it, my own take on, on the whole thing and I think it is simpler and easier to understand and it's still something that, uh, you know, that can be used um, it can be something simple, like I'm gonna talk about it or it can be something as complex as a PhD thesis for someone who wants to be like a professor in philosophy or something like that or, or maybe even astronomy, they mix it, you know, with real math which is not what I'm doing so that's the first one. The second one, what gives the greatest possible happiness to an intelligent living being? So I gave that some thought, came up with a good talk that I can give on that, which is obviously influenced by the series of stories that I can write, which in, in almost all the series that I can write, or in most of them, there is at least one being which is almost like at godly levels, and uh, I still manage to, to explain that being or to you know present it as a character in the story in a way that makes perfect sense, in a way that is you know easy to understand, nothing complex, and that anyone can follow. So obviously that has helped me to think about how happiness will work, you know, at the different levels for a living being. Uh, especially for an intelligent living being. So I can talk about that in that talk. That's topic two. So topic three, on thinking outside the box. So I'm gonna give my uh, opinion. What is thinking outside the box according to me? According to Pedro Cristobal, the, you know, the storyteller, the, the author, the, the talker here when I do these talks. So we have three topics. Right now I'm gonna do one, then most likely right after this, I will just stop this video, video number one, talk number one done, and I will do the second one. Um, I think I have time to do two of them, so I'm gonna do that. So the one I'm gonna do now, um, all three of them are pretty good. You know, the one on happiness, who doesn't want to see you know, a thought-provoking talk on how to achieve the greatest happiness? I think that's something that everyone would like to see at least once. The other one I'm thinking outside the box, that's interesting stuff. You know, if, if you like uh, the idea of a thought provoking talk, you know, smart talk, the smart, smart, smart talk, you're gonna like that one. And then this is the one that is, it seems like it's more scientific, but it's not really gonna be scientific at all. So I'm gonna explain it just like I do with the stories, even, so this can land in the realm of science fiction. Yeah, it's it in a way that is simple. So anyone can get it. Anyone can be, you know, inspired, 
I don't want to say entertain because right now I'm, I'm not in entertainment. Right now with these talks, I want to basically, you know, go into the thought provoking realm. So right now the idea is not, not just entertaining, though if I make it entertaining, that makes it better, but it's actually making a thought provoking video that you're gonna enjoy seeing. And by the end of the video, you're gonna go like, wow, that made me think. Regardless of who you are, like you don't have to be someone smart to, to actually like what I'm gonna talk about. So I'm gonna talk about the dimensions of existence with a plot twist. Okay, so let's see, let's see what I did here in my notebook, in my uh, notebook for the talk. This is the only one that I sort of like wrote a few things down because I want to make sure that I don't forget anything that I want to mention. Number one, these dimensions of existence are not the mathematical ones. So when we think the mathematical ones, that scientists say that there might be as many as 11 dimensions you know, of existence, of reality, um, and they begin saying, oh, the you know, land, times width, times height, the first three dimensions, you need that for 3D objects, or you need that for basically living beings in a 3D environment, you know, like us. And then they, many you know, the scientists and even many people say that the fourth dimension in that uh, paradigm, in that, you know, you know, way of looking at it will be time, because then you have these 3D objects because of the first three dimensions, and they obviously, you know, they grow older, they move around, they have like a clock on them, basically, like the time is ticking and it's making a difference for them, so it's a thing there. And then you, you can continue speculating like, oh, what are the other dimensions? They can be the different universes. There are many other things that you can put there for the other dimensions. But uh, I'm gonna look at that a little differently here. So number one, the word dimensions, the way I'm gonna use it is going to be like, uh, what are the essential characteristics that we need to know to be able to you know, essentially uh, understand and explain the life, the existence of the reality that is experienced by any intelligent living being, or even by any living being, doesn't matter if they're not intelligent. So which are, you know, like a small set of characteristics that if we only have those, we can already differentiate the you know, the life experience, basically, the existence of any living being in the universe or even beyond that we pick at random. It could be anything, it could be, you know, anything that's alive. It could be, you know, a human like us. It could be a dog or a cat. It could be a bacteria, obviously. Something is changing dramatically when we go from a being, a living being that we can see, like, like us or like a dog and a cat, when we take it to, to that level of bacteria, obviously it's something changing dramatically. You might be able to guess what it is already. I'm gonna mention it. What is changing dramatically there is one of the dimensions of existence that I'm gonna talk about. So yeah, I just want to make it clear, like the word dimensions, because when people hear dimensions, they begin thinking like, oh, it's space travel and wormholes and super science fiction and you know weird things rare things so i'm not going to use dimensions in that way for this video i'm going to use dimensions you know the word itself more like a you know like a central characteristic that is extremely important and that is central you know essential even necessary to differentiating the reality that all different beings experience and to even explaining why they experience their lives and their reality in that way. Okay, so before, before I dive, because I'm ready to, you know, like dive directly into this, so I'm gonna begin with the first dimension of existence, according to me and then the second one, and then the third one, and then uh, a fourth one that is, is, I'm just putting it there to make things thought-provoking because it's really not necessary to put that fourth one there. So I'm just gonna say four. That's it, not 11, just four. 
There might be more, even in this model that I'm talking about. I mean, I don't know. If someone wants to like, uh, I don't want to say copy me, but <laughs> if someone wants to like explain this further or dig deeper into it, this will be like the, um, the reality model of author Pedro Cristobal to explain existence in our reality and how all living beings you know experience it but it's gonna be a very simple reality model so we we you don't have to be like a, you don't have to be someone smart to understand what I'm talking about like even you know when I think of myself I think of myself as someone intelligent but not definitely not a genius level so if I understood this and I'm gonna go very simple with it I'm pretty sure that everyone can understand it so we're gonna go I wrote this down I wrote this down in a notebook because I really want to make sure that I don't mess up anything in this talk because I think it's an interesting talk so How any living being experiences its existence and reality itself, you know, can be divided in uh, dimensions or it can be explained by these dimensions, uh, which I'm giving my own definition to the word dimensions if you think about it, because we can change it into characteristics. So it's not like you have to go into a wormhole to change to the other dimension. No, all the dimensions. They are already here, like interconnected with each other. They are part of our uh, reality. Okay, so let's begin. First dimension. The first dimension, this is not gonna be surprising, but it's quite interesting, is you. You. So but I, when I say you, I'm thinking about you as, you know, as, as like a focal point as like a point of experiencing reality in this reality in you know in this I don't want to say grid because people are gonna think that I'm I'm uh, you know trying to to go with the with the holographic universe theory and you know the one that says that basically reality and the universe and everything is like inside a computer and all that and it is like a like a simulation and not necessarily going with that uh, but uh, you know the way I see it basically to explain it clearly like uh, if we could get a video of the life of any random living being of, of you of me or a fish you know swimming in, in a pond anywhere like, like in a lake or in the ocean or a dog or a cat or anything anything something that is superior or beyond us or, or in another universe or whatever if we could get a video of the whole life of that being from what perspective are you getting that video you are getting that video from his or her or its you know you never know eyes you're getting that video that perspective from the unique focal point, the unique mind, the unique vision of that unique uh, living being. So then you, and when I say you, I'm really thinking of, um, you know, like if we were, like, I don't like to explain it like this, but it's actually pretty clear when you explain it like this. Like if we were like, if, if existence, reality was like a grid, like a mathematical grid, like like a you know length, width, height, x, y, c, and everything and everyone and every planet, galaxy, universe, whatever you want, you know, if you want to go beyond that, is inside that grid. Um, we can we can still identify even if there are many you know trillions, gazillions, or whatever of living beings of all shapes, sizes and levels of intelligence and everything else we can still identify where in what specific point in, in that reality thing or place or whatever is each individual being uh, because they are they are seeing it only from their own point so you know you can have like like uh 
you have a clone of yourself and the clone doesn't experience reality in the same way as you do even if they have the same DNA the same genetic code if they are like you in every other way because they're seeing it you know they're walking in, in a different place as you they are not occupying your space you know they you, you two are not like like merge they're, you're in different places so just by by the fact that you're seeing it and your mind is getting this uh, picture of reality from a different location and the location is given by our bodies essentially the body that you have or, or you from where you see everything and from where you construct your reality and, and experience everything is what I perceive or what I see in, in this model which I don't know if it's near or not I just thought about it you know during one afternoon and I thought this will make a good talking in YouTube this will make a good philosophical talk this will make an interesting talk so I'm gonna talk about it so then when I say you as the first dimension of existence I'm really thinking about this unique perspective on experiencing reality that you have that I have that we all have because we are all seeing it from our own point of view from ourselves and if you think about it because of that we're all constructing our own unique view of what reality is of uh, our reality and then that's why we, we live a unique life because you're you're living like if we took like a video of your life and a video of all the lives of all the living beings in in the whole grid of existence or reality or whatever we will get different videos for everyone but why do we get different videos for everyone because they're all very different not really some of them are actually like almost the same they almost look like like clones of each other so what makes it different the fact it's then the fact is that point that focal point you know those eyes that body that mind from where we are getting or they you know that you know he or she that specific living being is uh, creating and getting the its or her or his unique view of existence so because of that number one dimension of existence to me is you you are making your own unique picture or view or under or even understanding actually that's a better word you're you're getting your own understanding of reality made from your own unique point of view so yeah number one dimension so that we can really understand any random different living being that we pick is he or she but seen as 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 a point of experiencing reality we're not points obviously we're you know we have a body we have a mind we're a little more complex than just a point in a grid like you know this is not math but sometimes it helps <laughs> to explain things easier when you think about it like in a mathematical kind of way but in an easy math way not in a complex one so like if if you look at yourself as one point in that grid is there any other point that is right now where you are and seeing what you're seeing and you know sitting where i'm sitting right now no it's just you and it's always like that you're always occupying you know your own space of your body seeing with your eyes understanding with your own mind so it's, it's the number one and most important dimensions of reality and, and existence of the living beings in this uh you know whatever it is multiverse universe uh a sphere of existence grid of existence you know i'm not god so ask ask god about that <laughs> he she or it will know so it's to me this is clear this is the number one dimension of not just of reality but of understanding how each unique living being experiences reality so you especially when we see it as, as a focal point of experiencing the reality okay number two so remember there are only four in this model let, let, let's call it let's call it Pedro Cristobal's model 
of the dimensions of existence. So, number two, location. Location, location, location. So, you know, if we get very philosophical, we could also say that that location is related to you as a focal point of experiencing, but it's not really. Because if you were born in planet Earth, at least right now, you're not going to any other location anytime soon. So your location is already set on stone. The location from where you're gonna experience your reality and you're not gonna experience any other reality is gonna be planet Earth. So the location, obviously, a very essential one is which planet are you in? It could change everything for you. But we can, you know, dig deeper into this dimension of existence, which is the location where you are. And we can say that even inside the same planet, you don't you have a completely different experience of what reality and life is if you live in the North Pole versus if you live uh, you know, like in Africa versus if you live in, um, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, any, anywhere else, like, like Hungary, Ukraine right now, Poland. It's very different living in a completely different country with different, uh, um, with a different way of living, with a different way, in some cases, a different way of thinking. You know, still people, but if they think very differently because they have been taught to think that way since the day they were born, then um, obviously their reality and their everything was greatly affected not just by them, but also by the location, especially if it is a location that they cannot leave. You know, they cannot leave that place and go to another place and compare how, how, okay, how is life here? How is life there? How is life over there? How different is it? They cannot compare because they are stuck in that location. That location for us, you know, in general, is planet Earth, by the way. You know, if you, if you read my series, my science fiction action thrillers, which are really good, so good, I love them, you're gonna get you know, to, to see or to meet or to think of and to imagine other places that are not just uh, planet Earth. You're gonna get more experiences. But, you know, in general, we're stuck here. <laughs> so our location is planet Earth. But location is a big deal for, location is, you know, such a big deal that I'm gonna put it as the second most important dimension of existence for, for a living being. Number one is you, you know, it's, it's the living being itself as, uh, man, I don't want to say this because it, it makes us feel as if we were rocks. You know, the living being uh, as a capsule of understanding reality and um, cultivating, creating, or, or living. Living is actually a better word. It's own reality. So, number one, dimension number one, you. The living being, the you know, the body, the mind, uh, you know, the brain, the the unique living being that you are. But number two is location, because you know, for example, us, we're stuck here on planet Earth right now. So far, so far, uh, you know, things can change quickly, and they can change. You never know, like from one year to another. It depends. It depends on what happens. But right now, it's, it's such a big deal, like location, I don't want to say it's everything. You is a more important thing, like how you experience and how you react, who you are, that, that impacts things even more than location. Depending on who you are, you might be able to overcome uh, a location that is uh, a terrible place. And you may be able to see things that are impossible to see in that location if you know, you're you're just thinking outside the box or something like that, but that's because of you. But regardless, the location is still like, like a pretty big roadblock. 
you know, regardless of how smart you are, the, the location is going to restrict you very, very much. So the location, the, the easiest way to see it is which planet, which planet are you in. But it, it gets complex because it, even inside the same planet, the location makes a huge deal of a difference. Like someone who always lived like in the bottom of the ocean in some uh, laboratory there or some factory there will have a completely different view of existence, even here on planet Earth, as someone like us who's living on, on a continent. Someone who, let's say, let, let's pretend that there is like, like a floating uh, city or something like that. And someone who always lived there in that floating city is not going to think of existence in the same way as someone who was living on the sea. Uh, it's, it's different. You got a different view. You experience a, a different life. So location. Obviously, we can go up in this location thing and, and get things really top walking because we can say, oh, but the location can be the solar system too, and a completely different solar system who bring many different things. Like in a completely different solar system. The number one dimension that you might not develop in the same way. Maybe you will be taller over there. Maybe you will be thinner. Maybe your bones wouldn't be as as heavy. Maybe even your your brain's development wouldn't be the same, and that could affect everything else. You never know. And it's all because of the locations. Just because you were over there and you were not here. And we can get more complex with this. We can say, oh, but it's the galaxy. Change galaxy to another galaxy. Then I don't know. Because you know, you know less. When, when you're getting further away from where you are, which what is restricting like my location, your location, our location the most, is at the planetary level. It's, it's the planet. But when we're getting further for that, oh, we're in solar systems right now, or we're in galaxies, you understand less. And there might be things there that then the only way the only way to grasp them or to be able to understand them or to even even to start getting somewhat closer to them will be imagining them it will be imagination because we simply don't know we don't know and there might be many things that you're never gonna know <laughs> even if you imagine all you want and even if you're a smart all smart you want doesn't matter and we can continue complicating things we can say oh so the location that changes now is the universe and in this other universe, you know, if we if we go into the multiverse theory, which is being very promoted right now, like all over the place, everywhere, like, you know, for example, I'm about to see the, you know, not right now, but I want to see it probably tomorrow, the Doctor Strange 2 movie. It's a, it's a big deal there with the multiverse, and it's all over the place lately. Um, and it's actually, it actually makes it more complex, because if we change according to this multiverse theory is we change universes there can even be like like a different you over there that only has a minor difference because maybe only this little thing changed and then and you know in such a thing uh, the dimension two of location which in this case is the, the universe which changed to another universe it, it will be a very big deal because then we can argue that, oh, the first dimension you, but this you over there is almost the same. So it's, it's not enough with the dimension of you to explain all the possible living beings. So we need to look for other dimensions that explain all these many over here that we haven't explained yet. So when we get into there, we realize that, you know what? We need to account for the fact that there's like a different universe, different. So how do we account for that? Location. Location isn't just about different planet or different galaxy. It could be a different universe. So location. So there are only four dimensions. I already covered the first one. You. You know, like yeah, the living being that you are, the body, the brain, the unique focal point or of view that you have in this universe. So you, this unique uh, location in the universe, which is alive, and which is a uh, you know understanding of what is going on and which is you it's number one number two location but location as a place not as a person or, or as a living being you know what if, if you get really philosophical with this 
we can argue that the first dimension u is also a location, but it is a location of the living being. You know, your body, your eyes, your brain, your mind. The other location that we're talking about in the second dimension is the place. It's, it's the planet, the solar system, the, the galaxy, the, the, the universe. Maybe there's more than that, I don't know about that. <laughs> you can speculate all you want, but there, there's a restriction. There, you know, there's... The only way to go beyond that restriction is imagination. Because we are more likely than not, and you know, it's very likely that we're never gonna reach the knowledge to, to reach that, uh, you know, plateau or, you know, that far away from our level just based on knowledge. It's going to be something outside the box, which imagination is probably the only thing that we can do outside the box enough to take us there. Um, which is probably why, why I get all these ideas, because I have been oh, so deep with, with, uh, with the stories and the series and the science fiction action thrillers, and it's all about imagination if you think about it. It's not really about writing, it's actually about imagining more than writing. Um, it's also about psychology, but I'm not gonna talk about that now. <laughs> so we're in the dimensions video. Okay, so we're, gonna, we're going to go into the third dimension, which is also pretty interesting. So you, first one, location. Not location of the living being, which is you, but the place where the living being uh, grows and, and learns and experiences everything. So the third dimension is size. Remember when I was talking earlier in the video about us, you know, the dog and the cat and the bacteria, and you realize right away, oh, something changed. And something changed not from us to the dog and the cat. You know, something changed there, but you, you can tell that the difference between us, the dog and the cat, and the bacteria is like a whole complete new level. It is something that is in such a, a whole another level that it is something completely different. And what describes that difference? Size. So it is as if we were going down on a whole entire level of, of reality and existence and, and experiencing the world and experience everything just because the size change dramatically to microscopic in comparison to the, the other living being that has a much larger gigantic size. So, obviously the level of intelligence of the living being matters, you know, the location continues being important, but the size is playing such a humongous role that I think it's, it should be put as, as a big uh, dimension of existence. It's a characteristic that if you don't, uh, you know, you have to keep in mind to be able to explain in essence, why the bacteria has a completely different experience of, of how you know, life is than us. It is seeing it at a whole different size. If we were that size, we will still have the same intelligence. We will still be ourselves, I guess. I don't know. Um, but we will also see a, a completely different world than what we see right now at our size. So, clearly it's very important. Like even if we look at the sizes here on planet Earth, it's already making a humongous difference. Like you cannot compare a being, any random being that you pick around, you know, like an ant in the street, you cannot compare an ant to a whale. And it is because of the size. It really is, you know, it's, there are other things in there, but the other dimensions explain those differences. The, the size is still playing such a major role that it's, it's just too important. Obviously, if we go in the, into the realm of science fiction, which I'm gonna go there in my series, in my stories, which are pretty interesting, um, you know, if you want to read them, you just can go here to my YouTube channel, look for the links, I think it's the first link that I have there, like in the wattpad.com. It's wattpad.com slash user slash Valkyrian creator. 
which is me, and uh, you're gonna find the, the one I'm writing right now there. Um, you know, I'm still not that far in it to, to be talking about these things in there. And, uh, and the stories are for fun. The stories are not to explain science or to make these videos. They, they are just a, you know, a thrill ride. So they are not about this. They are not philosophy. They are, you know, entertainment, basically. So size, and, and we can go up in, in size, but going up is harder to understand. Like when we're at this level of the size, it's easier to understand when we go one level below and the bacteria, because we're the ones that are here, we're the big ones, and the other ones are small below. But when we are the small ones and we're going up, and there's like a living being that is right here, and that is, you know, like a uni universal scale or something like that, then it's very difficult to understand for us it's probably landing into what we will call God territory. But here's the thing, for such a being, let's say that there are several of those beings. Among themselves, it's like us among ourselves. They don't see themselves as gods. They are, you know, just that community of gigantic beings that is like that. The ones who see them like something so huge and great are the ones who are below not the ones who are at the same level but much less the ones who are at, at the level of all because the ones who are at the level of all fit more likely than not they're complex they're more complex in in their minds in their thinking in their everything so it's a uh, you know whole different ordeal so um, i could talk a lot about this like um but i think i should move on and there's only one more Ooh. I'm gonna finish this video in less than 40 minutes. I can't believe it. That, that is very rare for me. There's a fourth dimension of existence to describe all the possible uh, living beings. And I think this dimension is starting to enter what we perceive as fantasy territory. So it can still be used in science fiction. Um, I'm gonna use it by the way in the uh, in part two in in the second season of the real reality series which I'm you know just beginning right now I'm in the first season uh, they go in, into there so it's you know it, it gets even more <laughs> mind-bending and thought-provoking mm. but uh, you know essentially yeah, let's just say the word, and then I'm going to continue talking about just saying the word. The four dimension, we got you, the unique location of this living being, the you know unique understanding and brain that this living being has, and, and the eyes from where he or she sees everything. So you, that's the dimension. Which one is it? Which living being is it? The other one is the location where, you know, what planet, what place, what solar system, what universe, what whatever, where are you? Where are you there? Third one is the size, your size. Like, are you an ant in size? Are you like us? Or are you something so gigantic that we will have difficulty understanding it? But the fourth one, which I think it's entering fantasy territory for us, but I'm still gonna mention it anyways, because I think it's, it's necessary for the model to be complete. The fourth one is the phase of existence. Perhaps you can call it level of existence, but I think the word phase makes more sense. Okay, so here's the thing. Why I'm calling this phase? We don't see everything with our eyes. We only see what the human eye can see and the human eye was made for the human experience, not for something that is completely different from the human experience or from the human reality. But there are many things that we cannot see. The force of gravity is extremely strong and powerful and we don't see it. But you know, we see things falling down, but we don't see something, you know, pulling them down like, like a force, but there is something there. X-rays, we don't see X-rays. Actually, if you look at it like in a physics book, 
you can see that there's like a wide range of light, different types of light, and we can only see like 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 small amounts, you know, like like the rainbow, those colors, and that's like only a section in the light spectrum. I don't know if that's the right name or not. I probably forgot the name by now. I, I took a, a class where they talk about that, but it was such a long time ago that I probably forgot. So there's like, like a light spectrum of all the different types of light. And there are many different types of light, like X-ray, I, I think like ultraviolet, like the sun's ray, ultraviolet, stir, gamma rays, there are many different types of, of light. And we only see like, like a small part of that whole light spectrum. So there are many forms of light that we don't even see even if we have them in front of ourselves. So what if there were many other things that we don't see because the, the human eye simply you know, wasn't built to, to be able to perceive that reality or to be able to see that? And what if in, in one of those uh, faces that we cannot even see, even if it is in front of us, there is a living being. There is like another form of living being that we don't understand so in that case, we will need this extra dimension of the faces to be able to include those. And for those, even if they are like in a different phase from us, by the way, something interesting, the face. So how do we describe our face if there are other faces? We could call our face the physical one. So we live in the physical phase of reality, of existence, of the multiverse or whatever it is, of the grid. If you want to, to I'm, I'm not too sure about this simulation theory yet, but you know, if, if you want to think about that, the grid, like, like a mathematical grid, or like a computer, which is how many people think about it. Uh, so, um, so yeah, the phase of existence. And obviously for those different beings in a different phase, who they are, the you, will still make a huge difference for them. The location where they are inside that phase, since it is not the physical one, then you know it wouldn't be about planets and galaxies, it will be about something else, who knows what it is. Um, who knows? Also, the size would matter even in that phase because, you know, if it is a super large being or a super small being, it makes a difference. And yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I, I think I, I said everything that I thought about for this talk. So the, how am I going to name this? How should I name this video? So. Talk on the dimensions of existence with a plot twist, or maybe a better name will be um, the uh, four dimensions of existence as seen by author Pedro Cristobal. I don't know, or well, I will see. I'll figure that out later. So that's it. This is my second video with a completely different view on this, on the dimensions of existence. Remember that when I say dimensions, I'm thinking about the essential characteristics that by themselves are capable of explaining the difference in, ex in, in um, you know, in how you experience reality for any random living being that we pick from anywhere in existence in, in you know, I'm just using these words to, to name it something, it's not because it is like this or anything like that, but like in the sphere of, of reality. Let's pretend that reality where we all exist, where any intelligent being exists, is a sphere. Um, so what are the essential characteristics in this sphere that will help me to understand the life experience of any random living being that I pick from there. Their body, which is where they got like, you know, if when we die, we get a video from our life, where did they get that video from? What was the camera for the video? Your eyes, in our case, it was our eyes. But you know, if you want to get very complex, not very complex, but more philosophical, you will say it's your brain. So, you know, 
you know, the body, the, the eyes, the, the brain. Yes, it's the person, it's the, it's the, the, I, I don't like saying it like this because it sounds too, you know, like uh, this will scare some people. Not me because I like talking about these things, but the, the capsule that you had to experience reality capsule that I had to experience reality this body that I have right here me capsule that you had to experience reality in this sphere of all reality it's you uh, so that thing which one which capsule was it oh it was that one. Oh, it was this one number one dimension number two the location where was that uh, that mind that body that uh, you know ca capsule sounds too artificial I think it, it may be that physical body might be a better way to say it. Uh, you know, ca capsule sounds artificial, <laughs> like a rock. Um, where is it? What location? What galaxy? What universe? Even inside the same planet? What country? Even inside the same country, it, there can be a difference there. Like, are you living in the woods or are you living at the beach? It's not the same. If you live your whole life at the beach, then if you live your whole life at the woods, you don't see life in the same way. Even if you are like like a like a twin, like you know, like a clone of someone else. Okay, so the other one is size, and I think size. Um, you know, it, it can if if you can get very picky about this we can say that size is already included in the you in the first dimension but I think that it's important to put it separate because by itself it makes such a big difference so I'm gonna put it separate and the last one is just to account for the things that we cannot explain so I just say okay so in what phase of reality are you and our phase will be the physical one so the last one is, is really like, like entering fantasy territory. It's not really science fiction even, although I do enter that territory in my real reality saga. <laughs> There's a reason why I call the story real reality. I'm gonna dive into these things there, not, you know, not like this, not in a talk, but with the characters that are going through the plot. So, and yeah, that's it. If you want to add more dimensions to this model, you're more than welcome. Oh, I would like to hear that. Like if you, if there's someone here that liked my video very much and you want to, you know, like add to it, say, okay, so Arthur Pedro Crystal, we got another one. We got a fifth dimension that, that fits with your model and that we need it for the model to be more complete. And that would be exciting. I would like to see that video. Um, but for now, this is as far as I go with the, you know, my, my, my way of looking at the dimensions of existence. I think this is easier to understand than the other mathematical model, because the other model is, is, is just like too mathematical. Like we're talking about length and width and height and time, like in a coordinate grid. But when I tell you, oh, okay, it's you, where your body is, and it's the location where you are, which can change, and it will change everything in your life and in your experience of reality, or it's your size. Everything changes if you're the size of, of a bacteria, or the size of us, or, or the size of, of a galaxy, even. It's, it's a completely different understanding and experience and view and everything of reality, even though all those different beings the, the bacteria, us, you know, the ant, dog, the cat, and even a being the size of a galaxy, they are living in the same reality. They are part of this sphere or grid or whatever it is, I don't know, of existence. So it's pretty interesting how the complexity and the shapes and the everything can change, but they are all. I mean, I don't want to say this to scare, I don't want to scare anyone. <laughs> I was thinking about the word prisoners. They are all prisoners of the sphere of reality. They cannot escape that sphere of reality. Uh, it's, I don't want to say prisoner because that's like a, like a negative word. Let's say uh, more like a, 
visitors or maybe not visitors because that makes it feel like as if you're also in the on the outside <laughs> more like a tourist oh yes or you know current um, beings who are experiences the reality you know from there from where it is from the sphere from all that so um, I think I'm done now I think I, I really said everything that I had in mind for this talk and I didn't really prepare myself for this for too long but I have been thinking about it for a while so I thought you know what it's time time to talk about this um, you know people who are smarter than me should take this you should use it in your PhD thesis or you know take it further and uh, and hopefully you know motivate more people than what I can motivate with this so that perhaps someone will figure out uh, if any of this um, actually makes a lot of sense and can be helpful beyond just my talk you know for more than just uh, an interesting and thought-provoking talk by you know by a random author <laughs> who thought about all this I thought about all this first for for the stories that I have, but since I do like this um, top provoking and philosophical topics, I obviously I ended up thinking about this uh, to do a talk on it as well. So now I did that. Okay, so first talk done. The one on the dimensions of existence. The second one I did one about the mathematical ones. I think I prefer this one now. I, I feel like more actualized. Like I, <laughs> this is the one right now, not the other one. And the other one is not bad. The other one can make you think too, but I, I, you know, I would like to believe this one more now. Okay, so what should I do next? So the, the other one, um, I had three, three topics at the beginning. So next I will go, you know, in another video. What gives the greatest possible happiness to an intelligent living being? This one is good. Um, and the, oh, the other one on thinking outside the box. I, I think I'm, I'm gonna give a, a good talk about that one. It, it's gonna be shorter than this one because I had more to talk about here than, than in the thinking outside the box one. But I think, uh, you know, they're all important. So right now I just finished the first one. So I hope you like it. I definitely liked it. You know, thinking about it, pondering about all this thing. And uh, I do like um, thinking about my stories more than, than thinking about these topics, though, because I think the stories are more entertaining. You know, uh, it's just easier to, to have a nice day thinking about the story than, than thinking about the mathematical stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, that's going to be it. So this is a 53-minute video. So signing out. Hope you liked it.